Poirot's excellent video on rendering with natural light and the comparisons between the various render methods available to a Bryce user has got me thinking. And, well, to recap, if you're using image-based lighting, then you get a, a good um, impression of where the predominant light source is when you're using direct light. But if you use uh, Trambience and even the gel lights or the obscure lighting approach, then you don't tend to get very much predominant lighting. So I mean, if we're talking about direct lighting, we have the sun lighting this simple scene, which I'm going to use for an example. If you want to make that shape, there is another video on my channel that shows you how to do that. But um, the point I would make is, if you're using direct light, then you have a sh strong shadow region, but you don't tend to get much information inside these areas because we're not simulating any global illumination. If you switch the global illumination on, which you can do now, I'll just show you that. Uh, premium effects, I'll keep it at 64 rays pixel, true ambience, scatter correction, boost light, and I'll lower the maximum ray depth to improve rendering efficiency. Although for some applications you might find increasing the um, ray depth will improve improve the simulation of the lighting. You can see now we're getting a bit of a fill-in on the shadow region there, but the lighting is still very basic. So, how can we have good quality light simulation, the advantages of the strong light bias provided by image-based lighting where predominant light sources will be visible as it is with the sun here, and still have good modelling? Well, you could use image-based lighting in conjunction with Trambian. So I'll bring in a one of Horro's HDRI images and I'm going to use this garage open HDRI. I'm going to low pixel diameter so I don't have such a huge memory footprint and besides it's being used as a backdrop I've got a reflective sphere in there to show you what's happening. Right so if I light this up and that's uh, direct lighting so I'll turn off Trambian's optimization so we've got direct lighting at the default setting arriving onto the scene I'll just check to make sure the global intensity control, keep that at 100. I'll just keep pointing that out because uh, some people can run into a problem with that. And now I've got Trambience and this working together and you can see the render is very slow. And this isn't even at the ma maximum settings. So practically speaking that's not a viable option. If I'm going to use it as a backdrop I'm going to turn the atmosphere off, set the sky to fully black and make sure in image based lighting I add to sky and then I'll see it in the reflection there of this object which wouldn't have been visible before but even though it's by turning the atmosphere off we've lost the fog's introduction and, and the colour of the sky it's not really improved render time so if we switch to ob obscure lighting because this is a render efficient method so we can turn cast shadows off, light from the inside, lower the quality uh, apply to light source to act as a light multiplier we're going to raise the intensity of the backdrop here so it looks a bit more appropriate in the reflection. This bright area is the open garage door. It just happens to coincide with the uh, with the perimeter of this uh, angular map. So it looks like it's on the outside. It looks a bit odd. Uh, turn specular off. I'm just uh, going through the settings. Trambient's already off. Include only background. And I'm going to create a target for that. So I'll create my light source. I'll set it to this colour to remind me that it's a special one. Uh, make sure it's capitalised and if I can type this correctly that will be a bonus. So that's got to be exactly right. Edit that. Trembian's optimization. Use gel. Include only background and in procedure we'll just set that to default grey. This surface is acting as the target for the direct lighting and nothing else is getting directly lit by the image based lighting. But by wrapping this around the scene, it's getting lit, and then the lights come into the inside. You can already see that the render time is much more efficient. This noise on the outside is what's being picked up from the HDRI backdrop that you can see here. So merely enlarging the light source so that the perimeter goes out of our field of view will solve that problem. Keeping it close is a good idea because that will, um, even though it's quite a diffuse uh, image on the inside of that light source that we can't see in the render engine. So you imagine we're projecting it on the inside of a sphere with the light from inside. It, it does have some bias but it's not particularly strong. So I was thinking with the gel light I provided an image that was then projected in using the ambient setting. Well I'm going to do is combine the gel lighting setup with the obscure lighting. 
So you have the advantage of the obscure light in that it's only one light source. Gel lights have to be added up over and over again to get enough light out of the ambience effect, but we won't use that. We'll project the light out using the HDRI image onto the inside of the light source and then pick up the same image from the HDRI and project it back in. Okay, I'll show you how this is done. It sounds a bit complicated, but once you get your head around it, it's not uh, it's not so difficult. So what you need to do is look at this and decide how small you want your light source. Now bear in mind in Trambians, the smaller the light sources get, the more noise you'll get in your image because it'll be higher contrast. So when the feelers go out, they might hit a bright light or they might hit where there's no light. So I chose this image because it's got a large predominant light source. So if we say we want the light sources to be very small, you would lower the intensity until you'd only got the light sources. If you wanted quite a diffuse lighting, as we are generally speaking at the moment, because we're just using a grey backdrop, then you would have lots of bright light sources in your scene because it's raised the level. Because we're going to export this as a low dynamic range spherical map. So I'll set it somewhere in the middle, which is where I was, and export the image. And it wants to be as a bitmap and it needs to be as a spherical map. So I'll just save that image and uh, I'll save saving it over my file name so I'll call this my uh, spherical map. So make sure it's set to spherical, that's important. So that exports itself. Now in PaintShop Pro what I shall do is get hold of that spherical map, drop it into my... alright that looks a bit bright for what I wanted. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go back in here and lower that value so and then and then export it again and uh, I'll just give it the same name as it had last time so it overwrites yes I want to replace it let's see if that's come out a bit darker for what I'm after right oh now you see I didn't set it to spherical and it's reset itself so that's a bit inconvenient because look what it's done it's exported it as an angular map which is less helpful so here we go, um, export image and remember to turn it to spherical, save it, oh, I don't want it to overwrite that one, stop doing that, I'll overwrite that one, yes, okay, right, um, back to the paint shop, so there we go, you can see now these light sources is very dark and that's too dark for what I want, so I'm going to have to go through this again, difficult to judge really the level that uh, is going to be appropriate, but uh, I'll, I'll note when I see it. Spherical, and save it over that one again. Yes. Right, back to my paint package. Right, okay, that's filling in the doorway a bit. So these light sources are quite small, but I'm going to get predominant light from that, and there's a bit of general lighting in this area. What I need to do to make it appropriate to wrap around the inside of the light source without moving the light source or rotating it is mirror this, so image, mirror, and then I need to offset it so it's 180 degrees out, so I need to get that doorway in the middle of this. So I've got a uh, image offset here, because it's a spherical map, it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so if I offset it its height, that will move it exactly halfway across. So if I get the information about this, the height's 793. So that will be my offset. So I go image effects offset. I've already programmed it in 793. It needs to wrap and that will bring it across. And now I'll save that as a uh, as a JPEG. So I will get that modeled up with my other image. And then back in Bryce and uh, restore that to the level I'd chosen. Check out of there and edit the light source. Go into the procedural material and in the diffuse channel put a blob, switch it to a picture, go into the picture editor and load in the map that I've just set up. Okay, so instead of a grey uh, background we're projecting it onto, and that map looks a bit off, uh, I need to set this to spherical because it defaults to sinusoidal for some bizarre reason. So that's better. So now I've taken my spherical map and wrapped it around the light source's diffuse channel. So even though in the render we can't see this surface, True Ambience will see it. And in some places it'll be dark, and in some places it'll be light. So the image-based lighting is projecting out from the middle of the scene, because it's light from inside. And it's coloured according to the HDRI image. 
but it'll be lighting this image so the dark areas will absorb light from that and the light areas will allow the light to be emitted back into the scene so it will then favor where the light sources are to a greater extent and we can, can control by the contrast in the image how small these light sources are but we'll need more light from the HDRI image in all probability because we just create a lot of dark areas so now it's it's gone a bit darker and we increase the light output here so I'll take it up to I don't know 350 it's just guesswork at the moment and see if that's given us enough light whoop, whoop, way too much you see it's nicely colored uh, 250 another guess okay that's not too bad a little bit um, oversaturated on this red possibly so I'll, I'll lower it to 200 right and render now so we see that we're looking at a three minute render time and you should see that the character of the light has changed because of this setting now there will be more noise in the finished render because it's uh, the the, uh, the lighting's biased now more towards where the light sources are in the background so that's both an advantage and a disadvantage in terms of we need more sampling but as a combined method it is closer to the lighting environment that you see in the backdrop this is uh, this is what I was aiming for anyway uh, so in the render options now we're set at 64 so it's not too bad so 256 um, raised per pixel render well, so that's going to report time on, on this is going to take um, oh, it's not a quarter of an hour yes yeah, about the time it's taken to record this video so far so it's not too bad bearing in mind as I've said before that if you're going to go to the trouble of adding a premium effect you may as well add more than one so if I use this sphere as a target I could add depth of field and uh, if it's about right it should be should still be in focus on this corner and take that slightly out of focus in the background if I want it to be more out of focus increase the lens radius so that's added my depth of field and if I wanted this material to look plasticky or reflective but without the cost of adding reflection because if I took this material and added reflection uh, because of the extra rays it would generate I'll just just put 50 in reflection on each which would no doubt increase the um, appeal of the surface make it look more interesting because of the additional reflective points it will increase the render time as a result and you'll see we're now up to 43 minutes that's increased things quite radically so I'll just drop the reflection out I can add specular highlight which makes it look a bit like reflection but it shouldn't have the same render cost so drop the reflection increase the specular now in true ambient rendering you don't get specular from that uh, from the, from the Trambians, but you can uh, craftily use the sun if you enable the sun but just knock out any diffuse output you can position your specular highlight in a, in a position appropriate for the background you've got by positioning the sun so if I save this render position in a blob and then rotate my scene to I can find the the doorway in the background which is providing the key light in this case indirectly obscurely if you like but uh, then we can position the sun in this area so if I hold control and alt and double click on the sun roller ball and then control and alt and click once on the scene I can put the sun in that area then if I switch back to my original view that will put highlights on the object hopefully in an appropriate place for where the light source is so that's uh, this if I render this now just adding that one specular light source has only increased the render time marginally so that's one way of adding that effect did I add it to the red or is it just not in a position where it's picking up on the red so corners material no I did add it there but it's oh it's fully black on the specular so there's no highlight there so I'll just pop that in there if I want a smaller that's, that's Camtasia highlight I just need to take the halo size down so I suppose uh, just modify this material like so make it much finer dot so now it should appear on the red as well somewhere just a, a little highlight like that makes it look plasticky so there you go that uh, is current experiment inspired by Horro's video of rendering with 
natural light so I'll just uh, I actually I am just going to add the reflection to this because I like the effect so much more and, and live with the the larger render time because I mean 45 minutes is not really a huge render time at least on this uh, computer it's um, i7 processor um, 920 so it's it's not too bad at uh, crunching numbers okay so that's the end of the uh, the video I uh, hope you found that interesting and you'll experiment with the uh, new lighting methods as outlined by our videos